Good morning, everybody. It's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly episode for Tuesday, March the 21st, 2023, episode number 210. And welcome to the first day of spring. And it seems like it's been forever since we've had spring, doesn't it? And it has been, but here it comes. Although looking out my window this morning, it doesn't really look like spring, but at least the temperature was above zero when I got up at about uh, six o'clock. So that's a good sign. Let's hope it continues. Okay, so let's take a look at what I have been working on in the past week or so. So you've seen this in bits and pieces before, but now it's completely done. This is the table runner placemat napkin set that I've made as a gift for my brother and sister-in-law, which I'm going to take with me out to BC when I go there the middle of next month. And I hope they really like it. It was uh, a lot of fun to make, although it did take a lot of time. So if you take a little closer look at the table runner, you can see that it's made up of uh, blocks. Now, these blocks are done in the hoop. And then once you have them completed, all you have to do is sew them together. And you'll notice these squares, those are the blocks. So in this particular uh, table runner, there were 10 blocks to make. Um, eight of them are square, four of them are these rounded ends. Now, sewing them together is not complicated. In some ways, it's kind of like a, a quilt as you go, because each one of these pieces uh, are also quilted. Um, there is batting underneath the fabric that goes on here, and it's, like I said, an in-the-hoop project, which means it's in-the-hoop applique. And if you've never done an in-the-hoop applique using your uh, embroidery machine, what are you waiting for? Don't be intimidated by them. They are very, very easy to do. Um, in many ways, they're easier to do than to have to do a regular applique, you know, because you don't really have to cut out your pieces. The machine will look after all of that for you. Um, so if you've not tried one, do try one. And I think I have a video, uh, a past idiot quilter one, or one in one of my uh, demo sections where you'll find I take you through the process. One thing, though, that people have asked me about, and here's a close-up of the placemats and the napkins. Uh, one thing that people have asked me about many times is, so what is the procedure for sewing together the blocks? they get the idea of in the hoop applique, but they're a little intimidated about having to sew all the pieces together. Well, you shouldn't be intimidated by that either. It is so, so easy. And it is so easy. I thought I would do a little demo on how to do that, but I will post that in next week's edition of the Idiot Quilter. So stay tuned if you're interested in something like that. Now, the placemats for this, and here you can see a close-up of one of the placemats. I just took two of the blocks, uh, did those, and then put some uh, borders around it. And uh, with the coordinating fabric, back them. Uh, there is a, uh, an extra piece of batting. And when I say batting, I'm using a specialized form of batting. I use something called batalizer. Batalizer is a batting that's uh, has low loft to it. And it's great for things like table runners and placemats because it'll allow those items to lay flat on your table. And especially when you're putting something on them, you don't want them to be tippy. So that avoids that problem. Um, and you can get battleizer at any quilt store. I order mine by 15 yard bolts uh, from Monfil. Um, the napkins, were really fast and easy to do if you have a serger because that's what I used. I did a rolled hem uh, with my serger all the way around uh, two pieces of fabric because this is a double piece of fa fabric. You could make it with a single piece of fabric, but then you're not going to have uh, uh, you're going to have one side that's going to not look as nice as the other side, right? Um, also, they're not as substantial, not as thick. So I take two pieces of fabric, both the same size, both the same fabric, um, pin them together uh, with the wrong sides together, and then I just run them through my serger. Um, and in no time at all, you have napkins. Um, now, you don't have to use the same color of fabric on both sides. You could make them reversible. You could use um, a different fabric on the underside of each napkin and you know that would look very pretty too I, in fact 
I didn't think of that at the time that I was making these, but I could have used, because you see in this picture, I have two colors of napkins. I have the bluey ones and the red ones. I could have put the blue fabric on the back of the red ones and yeah, that would have been fine uh, with it too. So you could decide which side you want to come have out to fit your um, tablescape. So anyways, as I said, these are really a lot of fun to do. Now they do take some time, but once you get into the flow, not that, that much, and they make a great gift. Um, you know, I couldn't stop. <laughs> I got the table runner done. I decided, oh, I got to make placemats. And then of course you can't have placemats without napkins. So one thing led to another. Okay. So that's what I've been up to. I've also been working on my color splash block of the month quilt. Oh, you can see behind me over there hanging up the pieces for the second last set of instructions for this. I will have this quilt pieced together by the end of this week. I have uh, month eight or month seven and month eight. Month eight is the last month of instructions for this quilt. And then it'll be done. And if you don't remember what this quilt looks like, I have shown pieces of it. It's the one with a lot of applique on it. And yeah, this last stage of it was a lot of cutting. A lot of strips that had to be made. Then strips had to be cut into strips. And the strips had to be sewn together into nine patches. And yeah, it goes on. So today, after I'm finished recording this, I'm going to get back at her. And see how far I can get today. And then... Well, I hope by the weekend, I'll be able to uh, have this all ready to throw up on Lucy and to quilt it. And I'm not really sure what I'm going to use for quilting design yet, um, but I will come up with it. Now, I have been thinking about this. There's a lot of raw edge applique on this, and it's all sewn down. Um, and it's done with batiks. So batiks don't tend to fray as much as regular quilting cotton but they still will fray. So I don't know, once I have this quilted and bound, whether or not I'm actually going to wash it. In fact, in my mind, this quilt's taken me so long, it's so intricate, um, I'm trying to figure out a spot in my home where I can hang it. And I think I have an idea, and I already bounced it off of Walter, and he didn't poop pot, so that's a good thing. In fact, he came up with a suggestion for that sounds pretty good for accommodating this quilt. So I think that's what it may become, a display quilt, because it is a gorgeous quilt. And I'm I'm very proud of what I've got done so far. Cross my fingers, don't blow it now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's what I have been up to. So what's been happening? Well, um... We do have tomorrow, Wednesday, March the 22nd, starting at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We have another session of Sew with Stephanie and Stephen. That's just a casual drop-in kind of thing for about an hour and a half, or it could be a little longer. Um, and the, the information for that is in the show notes, the link. It's a Zoom. It is not a YouTube Live. Uh, all are welcome to join us and work on whatever you want to work. So a little bit of Wednesday morning sewing. Uh, give yourself a little bit of uh, a break and a little time to maybe catch up or carry on with some projects you're working on. Uh, and by the way, uh, I know in my show notes, I have usually uh, several different Zoom links for different things. Please read the uh, explanation as to what each Zoom link is for. It's there. It's very clear. Okay. Uh, because I had an email yesterday, actually, from some poor soul who wanted to join in on the So With Stephanie and Stephen session this week, wasn't sure which one, which link to click on. Well, it's there. Uh, I have it all printed out. The very first line of the link tells you what it's for. So it will say, So With Stephanie and Stephen, and then the link is below that, and just click on that. And most of the links I'm putting up these days for pop-up sew days for uh, Craft and Chat and for Sew with Stephanie and Stephen are all what are called reoccurring Zoom links, which means they won't show a date and a time because they're usable anytime. So you just wait for my announcement of when one of those event events are. And if you've already copied it, and what I would do is I would have a special little spot on my computer 
like a stick an electronic sticky note or um a word file or something like that that i could drop those right into and then i don't when i know that a pop-up so day is coming up for example i can just go right to where i'm storing that link and click on that and away you go uh with it that's how i would organize it whatever works for you um so yeah just make sure you read what it's for so you have the right one okay and uh speaking of pop-up uh so days we just had one this past saturday it was great i think i had a record number of people attending that one it was a special pop-up so day because one of my subscribers and friends was having her birthday and that's what she wanted for her birthday was a pop-up so day so we had a pop-up so day on saturday all day um there were about 30 of us on there at the height of it which is really really good um and i think everybody thoroughly enjoyed themselves i did hear a lot of people say they got so much done that day and it is you know for some reason uh and i've heard this from other people and i find the same thing i'm very productive when i'm sewing with other people you would think that if you're the least bit social that when you're sewing with other people you'd be spending all your time chatting with people not getting anything done seems to be the exact worse the exact worst the exact opposite of that um you know you're chatting and getting things done as well and the time just flies by and it's always a lot of fun always learn a lot of things you've heard me say that before but it's very true and i usually end up buying something because somebody's got something that i decide i want not this time no there i didn't buy a thing so i saved some money there good thing because i just dropped a load of money on thread for my long arm and backing fabric <clears throat> um excuse me uh and that kind of thing so yeah and if you saw the vlog yesterday you know i bought a few other little toys as well that are not related to quilting but you know are related to apple products if you haven't seen that go ahead check out my vlog you'll understand what i'm talking about so yeah when's the next pop-up so day um don't know won't be this weekend um although lately it seemed like it's been like almost every weekend but you know <clears throat> distance makes the heart grow fonder if i put one up every weekend you take me for granted <laughs> you know what i mean so no <clears throat> got a little frog in my throat so what else do we have yes okay stephanie and i yesterday got together electronically digitally zoom like and we uh did a trunk show of the finished quilts that came in from our collaborative sew along that we did about a month ago the stargazer quilts and we asked people that uh, if they got them completely finished meaning quilted bound by march the 18th to send pictures of them to us and we would put together a little trunk show well <laughs> we only had three that were done now don't despair if you're one of those people that just couldn't meet that deadline and that is fine you know we can't always don't put yourself in undue pressure this is supposed to be fun um you can send a picture of your totally finished quilt whenever you get it totally finished to me and i will feature it on one of the episodes of the idiot quilter so don't despair if you missed out on the little trunk show there's lots of opportunity for you when you have it done to send it to me and i will feature it here okay so having said that um i'm going to show you our trunk show from the stephanie and stephen so along or so, yeah it was so long so everybody here's the moment you've been waiting for we said that we were going to have a trunk show of the quilts from uh stephanie and stephen's so along that we did a month ago the stargazer quilt and uh, some of you have sent your finished quilts in we don't have that many to show you because a lot of people are still in the process of getting theirs quilted one way or another and that's not a problem and we'll talk about why that's not a problem at the end of the presentation but our idea here is to show you what did come in and we're going to point out the things that we love about these quilts so i'm going to switch my screen over so you can see this and it should be coming up yep there it is so this is our first uh quilt sent to us this is by don snyder and 
I mean, what stands out for me is the use of yellow. In yeah. This quilt. yeah, it looks like sunshine on the bed. <laughs> it does. It's very bright. It's very cheerful. And, you know, yeah. now the, the in this case, what I'm seeing is in some of them, I'm seeing more of the secondary pattern than the star. Yep. Um, but when then when you look at it, then you see the stars. So it's kind of like in this version of it with the color choices that the stars are more the secondary pattern and they're kind of a nice surprise. Yeah. It's, you know, you're looking at it. My eye goes right to the center first. What What about you? Yeah, absolutely. I see that little, it looks like a greenish color or so around the center yeah. and then the white around the um, outer squares. So, yeah. but yeah, I, I just think it looks like a, a bed of sunshine. It's really neat. It, yeah. I mean, it's very cheerful, very cheerful. Yeah. Here, here it is hanging up on a wall so you can get another look at it. Now, I don't think Dawn got an opportunity yet before she sent those to us to have it quilted. So yeah. um, now this one, quilting pattern for this, the, the fabric that's in it is is pretty busy and you don't want to take away from that. So I guess, I don't know, my suggestion would be to use possibly a uh, either, well, you could use a dark colored thread, I suppose, if you want the quilting to really show up. I don't know. What do you think, Stephanie? Um, I see that there's like some honeycomb and bees on the pattern. Yeah. So I think something, there's definitely several, if she takes it to a long armor, um, honeycomb patterns, she mm -hmm. could do that with a, a yellow thread just to give it a pattern, but not, you know, make the thread pop out at you. Yeah. I think that would look really cute. And, you know, not until you just mentioned it to me, but now I see it very clearly in this picture. There is definitely a theme in what she picked for the fabric. Yeah. The bees and the honey, the hives and everything like that. And so, yeah, I think it would look really cute with maybe something with a a bee motif, maybe flying around, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. It's a swirly things on it. Yeah. So, well, Pamela or Dawn, not Pamela, Dawn. <laughs> I did say Dawn, didn't I, each time? Yes, Dawn. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Don't want to get mixed up here. Um, I think be sure to send us a, a, a picture of it when you have it quilted as well, because I'd yeah. love to see what you do with it. Yeah, me too. Okay. So our next one comes from uh, Pamela. She has laid it out on a grassy knoll. So hmm, she must obviously live in an environment that doesn't have <laughs> much snow because hmm, that wouldn't be in my environment. Yes, Pamela lives in Florida, so oh, well, okay. Here <laughs> she you go. Doesn't have the white stuff on the ground like we do. <laughs> no, but very, very nice. Yeah, um, I love the use of the blues and the greens, and then with that orange center, and it, yeah. it vibrates out. Now I'm wondering, this would make a really nice picnic quilt. I guess maybe because I see it on grass. Yeah. <laughs> um and. Her, uh, I don't think we have, no, we don't have a, another picture of, or do we? Second here. No, we don't have a picture of the quilting, but I'm wondering if I can just blow this up a little bit. There we go. So oh, cool. So it, it looks, looks like, like she did a meander. Yeah. Which but actually goes very nice with it. It does. And I love how she pulled the orange binding to match the orange in the center. Oh, yeah. That, that's true. And this that is, looks really good. She made this now, if I think, if I'm correct about this, I think she was making this for a friend with a school theme. For her daughter. Her daughter's a school teacher. And uh, yeah. I think she's only been teaching for a couple of years because she's pretty young in her early 20s. Um, and she made this for her classroom. So. Oh, that'll yeah. look great in her classroom. And I'm yeah. assuming she probably teaches uh, elementary. Yeah, I'm assuming so. so. <laughs> yeah, I would think yeah. uh, with that. Well, I, I wouldn't be uh, afraid to hang it up in a high school room either yeah. because, you know, that it just, you know, and you, you put things like this in your classroom, uh, you've got to have a classroom that's got stuff on the walls. It doesn't matter what yeah. group you teach because it inspires the kids and it makes it a nice, warm, welcoming environment. And I think that's what this quilt is definitely going to do. Yeah, uh, I agree. I think it would warm up a classroom really nicely. Yeah, so. I think that's really well done. Really nice. Yeah. Her points are just right there. I mean, you can right see on. the stars. She did a great job. Yeah. That's gorgeous. And the next one comes from Sue Norfleet. And uh, she has sent us three pictures of this. But the first one is what the quilt looks like hanging up on a wall. I love her quilting. I um, do too. The stars really do show up on this. And each each one is a different color family. 
Yes. And that print in the center too, as well, goes really nice. Uh, you know, first thing I saw when I looked at this were the stars, but then my eye went to the center. And uh, so it pulls you in from that. Um, I think she's got another picture here of a close up of the yeah here's a close up of her. Oh, quilt. wow, her quilting looks great. I wonder if that was uh, if she did that herself or it's computerized or a pantograph. It looks to me, well, Sue, if you did this yourself as for motion, my God, you're good. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I was gonna say it looks like a pantograph to me, but if she did it freehand, oh my goodness, we need to bow down to her. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Well, no uh, that's amazing. How... I I'm looking at that going, oh, I need that pattern. <laughs> well, no matter how she did the quilting or if she had it done, either way, yeah. the quilting is just excellent on it. Yeah. And here's the back of it as well. And you can yeah. really see the the design. I love that design. I love it. Yeah. So that very well done, uh, Sue. Love it. So Sue, if you had this done, tell us what pantograph it was because we're drooling over it. <laughs> yeah, we are for sure. Um, so that's all the quilts that I had come in from people who have participated. But Stephanie and I have ours, and here's Stephanie's, which I I just you just gave me a new love when you decide to go with the green and the purple for that combination. I just yeah. love the combination. This is the first time I've ever done a green and purple together. Um, and I really love how it turned out. So I'm yeah. excited. For it. Yeah. Your stars just pop from it as well. And I'm looking at your quilting and I love that design too. Now, how did you do the quilting? You uh, computerized on the. Yeah. Long computerized on my long arm. Yep. Yeah. I don't do a whole lot of custom quilting these days because it takes so long, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, so. I never have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm a computer boy on mine. But yeah, yeah. I, I really love this quilt and the border on it, even though the pattern didn't call for borders, I really think the borders work so well with this this design. It gives your your eye a place to stop before you put the binding, I think. Yeah, so, so you're using yeah. like a white background um, yeah. with it. It it allows the pattern in this in the center of the motifs to, to float. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Well done, Stephanie. I love Thanks. it. And here is the back of yours too, oh, yeah. and the purple. Yup, again, I love that fabric you used for the backing too. Yeah, that was a uh, eggplant grunge, and I just thought it. <clears throat> excuse me, I just thought it went really well, and it was a 108, so I didn't have to like piece the backing. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. I always use 108s where yeah. I because I hate piecing a backing. Me too. <laughs> so here's mine. The guy that oh, I was off with. Um, I love it. You know, if I if I read now. <laughs> You're not supposed to do this, but I'm going to. I have a mistake in it. You'll notice my squares in the center are like hourglass squares, uh -huh. you think, except this one. I got oh. pieces here the wrong way. I should have taken one of these and put it down in here to reverse those. I did not notice that until after I laid it out to take this picture after it was all quilted. But, you know. Okay, it makes it unique. <laughs> such is life. But it just I love it though. I love your quilting. It's beautiful. Yeah, that was a uh, a pantograph design with stars. Um, I can show you the back, but it doesn't really show up on the back because I used a fairly light colored thread, and the back's very very busy. Yeah, uh, but it is a. Uh, let's see if I can get a little bit closer here. Your backing fabric is really neat. Yeah, this was one that was in my stash. I bought. I'm not sure where I bought it uh, at one time, but you see the quilting a little bit more in it here. But yeah, I wanted to use a variegated thread and it didn't work. The variegated threads I had just did not work with my Lucy. Uh, uh, and so since then, I have a different brand that I haven't tried yet that according to my long arm uh, salesperson, she says she uses it. It's uh, Superior Fantastical or something. And okay. she that'll work she doesn't have any problem with her apqs with it so i bought some of those to try um at some point in time but yeah you can see the stars and the swirls yeah i really like those and mine's all real crinkly because mm -hmm. i washed it afterwards i always wash my quilts after they're mm -hmm. done because i like yeah. that crinkly look i love it i love the crinkle so i know some people don't but oh, I, I do i think it looks great so that is what we have to show in this little mini trunk show. And if you missed out on getting yours done because 
you know, you didn't get it done. <laughs> it happens. Uh, don't worry. You can send a picture of your completed quilt once it's all quilted and bound to me. My email address is in the show notes uh, in my videos. It will be in the, the video that's here. Um, and uh, anytime. And I'll be more than happy to feature it as a quilt of the week uh, with it. So you do that. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't come until next year. It doesn't come until next year. Don't worry about it. You might have to. Yeah, but Stephen likes to feature people's quilts, um, subscribers' quilts on his channel. So send those to him because we want to see them. We want. Yeah, we most definitely do. Yeah. So thanks to everybody who participated in the sew along with us. It was my first sew along and I had a great time doing it. And down the road, we'll probably do another one. I know you're doing some right now with other people too. So yeah. check those out. Um, check out Stephanie's channel because that's where she will tell you all about that <laughs> as well. And yeah, so thanks everybody for joining us with it. It was a great experience. It was lots of fun and we love everything that you guys did. Um, so carry on and I'm thanks for sharing on. and I'm going to carry on with my caramel macchiato. <laughs> so, okay. So I hope you enjoyed that. It may have been short, may have been sweet, but there it is. Okay. So let's talk about the, my spring retreat, spring 2023, the idiot quilter retreat, some updates on this. Well, a week ago, I opened up registration. I can't believe the response i have 93 spots for this retreat i have filled 88 of them there are five spots left so my recommendation if you've been sitting on the fence don't sit on the fence make up your mind now because i suspect that those five spots before later this week will be gone now <clears throat> if you miss out and for whatever reason, but you still would like to come, then tell me that. Send me an email and say you'd like to be on my waiting list. I usually find that when something like this happens, when it fills up, I can expect 10 to 20% of the people who have said they're going to come to the retreat uh, suddenly have something that happens where they can't. And they let me know, that's very important that they let me know as soon as they know. So if you're one of those people, if you find out down the road, I mean, we're a bit of a ways from May the 6th when this is happening, but as soon as you find out that you for sure cannot come, then let me know, I'll remove you from the list and I will take someone that's on my waiting list and put them in your spot. So yes, I will be establishing a waiting list. So there is a possibility that if you missed out in this first round of registrations that you could still end up uh, going. But you won't if I don't know you wanna be on the waiting list, okay? Now, does that mean you can, on the day of the event, uh, just drop in? No, sorry, not on this event. Um, I do not publish the link to the retreat uh, on my YouTube channel. It will go out to all of those people when we get closer to the date who are um, already registered for it. So it is a private event in that way. Um, why am I doing it that way? Because I need to know numbers. Um, so that's why. Uh, there will be guest speakers. The guest speakers, I haven't asked them yet, but I will. And if I have their permission, I will record their presentations during the retreat and I will post those separately. So if you weren't able to attend the retreat, you'll at least be able to um, enjoy the guest speakers after the fact. Um, there will be prizes, but if you're not registered and you're not at <laughs> the retreat, you can't win a prize. So yeah, and we do have the icebreaker cocktail party again. That is only open to those people who are registered. Okay. So yeah, if you're not registered, there's a lot of things you're going to miss out on. Now, I really wish I could open it up to more people, but my Zoom license only allows me 100 spots. And seven of those spots I have to reserve. I need 
three spots for my guest speakers. I need three spots for my technology and I need one spot for Walter as well. So yeah, that's why there's only 93 spots available. And as I said, at the time of this recording, Tuesday, March the 21st, there are only five spots left, but I will establish a waiting list. Okay, so let's move on now to Subscribers Quilt of the Week. And this beautiful creation comes from a longtime subscriber, a regular contributor to the Idiot Quilter here, Patsy uh, Wilkerson. This week's quilt from a subscriber is actually a Christmas quilt, and Patsy Wilkinson uh, did this one, and it is a tree skirt by Juju Designs, and it's one that I also purchased before Christmas of last year and started working on, but I didn't get very far. So that's a project I need to finish up sometime during this year. But let's take a look at Patsy's lovely creation, and it is it's absolutely gorgeous, a very nicely done um, project, as you can see. And this takes a long, long time. So Patsy, you have all kinds of uh, patience. I can say that for sure. And I love your backing fabric with the uh, very stylized, uh, looks like musical angels on there. I think that works so well with it. So really, you could use either side of this Christmas tree skirt, uh, depending on, you know, what you prefer. So it is truly a reversible project. But nevertheless, very well done. And thank you for sharing that with us. And I'm running low on quilts to feature. So if you've got something, and it doesn't have to be a quilt, it could be a bag, it could be whatever, a sewing creation, a garment even. Um, even something that may not be necessarily a, a quilt, but shows your creative talent. Maybe you are a uh, paper crafter, card maker, something like that, knitter, crocheter, whatever. If you've got something, send me one picture, one picture only, please. And... In 50 words or less, tell us about your creation, and I'll feature it here. So you can send that to my email address. The email address is in the show notes below. Okay, so let's go now to the YouTube channel of the week, and this is Angie's Quilt Studio. This week's YouTube channel of the week is called Angie's Quilting Studio. And I reached out to the lady who puts this up a couple of times via email, but she never answered me back for an interview. So I guess we'll just have to judge uh, solely upon uh, what she has here to offer on her YouTube channel. And she seems to have quite a bit to offer. That's why I want to interview her, because I thought she would be a very interesting interview. But nevertheless, let's take a look at what she has here. So it's called Angie's Quilting Studio, as I said. And you can see she has a wide variety of um, videos. Um, let's take a look at her playlist to see how things are organized. She has uh, videos about quilt shops. She has quilt tutorials, quilting studio tour, Grandma Creates Country Christmas, travel, Grandma creates recipes, so you get some recipes as well as quilting. Um, some things about her personal life as well. Um, something about health updates, so I'm not sure. Maybe that's why I haven't heard from her. Uh, so, you know, don't judge. Um, so there's lots here, I think, for everybody. And I have watched a few of her videos, and they're very nicely done. Um, her tutorials are very clear to follow. Um, and she's got some great ideas and some great inspiration. So if you're looking for tutorials, if you're looking for inspiration uh, from a very nice individual, then check out Angie's Quilting Studio. Now, I did reach out twice to Angie uh, requesting an interview with her because I thought she'd be very interesting. And I've had no reply. So I guess Angie's not that interested in uh, giving me uh, an interview or whatever. Okay, so let's go to future projects. This one is another in the hoop project. Um, it would be great for Easter, but I think this one would look great any time of the year on your table. And I'm dying to get at it, but I'm holding myself back because I've got, you know, that thing behind me to get finished. But it's called the Folk Art Rabbit Table Runner, and it's by Sweet Pea Designs. 
This week's future project is a table runner and it's by Sweet Pea Design. And it is one that I want to do very, very soon because it would be great for Easter. But I also think it would be great for any time of the year. It's called the Folk Art Rabbit Table Runner Flag. So you have two projects here where you can make it either as a table runner or as a flag, a decorative flag. And you can see by the various pictures what this looks like. It's very stylish. It does have that folk art look to it. And uh, it is an in the hoop project as well. And you know how much I really love in the hoop projects. So this is one that I have purchased. And I believe at the time that I got it, it was on sale. So I got it for 50% off. It's not on sale anymore. But they have sales on a regular basis at Sweet Pea Designs. So, you know, if you're not in a rush, you can uh, maybe wait for a sale. Now, here is a variation of it done on a back, black background, which I think is very, very stunning. And uh, they're even showing how you can make it into a pillow or a design like this. So there are various things you can do with the designs that come from Sweet Pea as well. You don't have to necessarily do this particular one as a table runner. So that's called the Folk Art Rabbit Table Runner flag by Sweet Pea Designs, and I'm looking forward to getting on with this one. Now, I also have an interview this week, and this was with uh, a lovely lady, Amanda, from Not Your Granny's Quilt Show. It was a great interview. She herself does a lot of really interesting interviews with interesting people as well, and she also uh, runs a business with her mother, uh, which we talked about in the interview. So here's a little teaser for that interview. I want to make a listing for custom quilts because people are asking us to do it kind of randomly, but I want it to be something that we can offer. And so I put that up and it was immediately, like we immediately got so busy with it. And so how does um, that work? If someone wants a custom quilt, mm -hmm. what do they do? They, they just come to you and say, okay, I have this idea and you sort of, work with them and formulate it? Yeah, essentially. I mean, if we're working through Etsy, it's just a lot of messaging back and forth. Um, usually people will have a general idea of what they want and they'll send inspiration photos or fabrics or, you know, I just want a, a lot of it is memory quilts. So we get boxes mailed to us all the time of clothing and other, you know, items that people want put into a quilt. Um, which, you know, funnily enough, I didn't think that that was going to be as big of a, a deal as it is, but there's not really many people offering it out there. So I've talked to so many people who are like, I hate making t-shirt quilts. I hate making quilts with clothing. But I think because my mom's background of sewing everything and making apparel and making home decor and doing light reupholstery kind of things, like she has the knowledge of how to work with all these different fabrics and how right. to kind of make them work together. And so we're able to, you know, bring those projects together for people. But yeah, we just, a lot of messaging and a lot of questions. We ask a lot of questions. And that interview is posted on my YouTube channel. So you can watch the full interview and you will find a link for it in the show notes below. So that takes me to, um, this week's online quilting store. And lately I have been featuring a lot of them from the East Coast of Canada, because as you know, in June, I am off to the East Coast uh, for the Great Canadian Quilt Show and to travel around and see the sights of beautiful of the beautiful Canadian East Coast. And I got hiccups now, sorry. So this one is called the Covered Bridge Quiltery. This week's online quilt store is called the Covered Bridge Quiltery, and this is located in New Brunswick. Um, let's just find out exactly where it's located. Uh, let's go to their homepage and see what they say. Um, okay, they're open Tuesday, every Tuesday. Oh, that's something else. Okay, books and patterns. I'm just looking to see exactly where they are located in New Brunswick. Uh, oh, here we go. They're at uh, some in a little town called Riverview. So they list their store hours. 
And yeah, well, let's go get up here and take a look right into their fabric. Um, they have, they show their different brands, Henry Glass, Maywood, Kimberbell, and a whole bunch of other ones. It looks like their average price is $21.96 per meter, expensive. Uh, but I have been finding that any of the quilt stores that I have reviewed that come from the East Coast, their prices are a little bit higher than what we're used to paying for here in my own province. Uh, but, you know, fabric has gone up, as you've heard me say many times before. So, yeah, what can you do? Not much uh, about that. So I'm just trying to see here what they how they list their fabrics they have brands color novelty specialty in fact orders so brands Vinertex, color works dreamland grudge moda northcott timeless treasure toscana toscana is northcott i believe but let's just take a look at their northcott well northcott is cheaper but i think that's because solids and blenders are a little bit cheaper so there is a range of prices here. Um, Selection-wise, well, they have 26 pages of just Northcott. So that's a good selection. Yeah, and they've got a little bit of everything on here. I see some familiar favorites uh, as well. So, uh, yeah, let's check out uh, specialty animals. Back to school, Christmas, Easter, fall, Halloween. All right, what you would usually expect. Fat quarters. Always like fat quarters. Three twenty-four. That's a good price for a fat quarter. Oh, but they vary up to four ninety-nine, five twenty-four. Okay, so you know, I guess it depends on where you buy it or what kind you buy. Um, fat quarter bundle. And again, 26 pages of these. Let's go to their last page. Yeah, so they have, it seems, they have, by quantity alone, a good selection of fabric. Now, let's see. They've got shop calendar. Okay, so this must be what's coming up. Classes, embroidery class, open sew day. A lot of embroidery classes, bag classes. Okay. So I'm assuming those are in-person classes. Digital dealer exclusives. Collection of digital embroidery files and instructions available for sale. Okay. So it looks like they have some embroidery files. You have Kimberbell, um, various in the hoop projects as well. I'm not sure what they mean by dealer exclusive. Let's just click on it and see. Well, it looks like you can purchase these. You don't have to be a dealer. So, okay. All right. So that's kind of nice that they have uh, embroidery, machine embroidery designs. They have a new arrival section showing you everything. Lots of moda. If you're a moda person, Northcott. Okay, so, so far I'm thinking there's quite a bit here to be seen. I am not sure how far away from Fredericton uh, their actual store would be, but if it's on our way while we're traveling through the East Coast in June, then I'll be sure to stop into this store, um, just based upon what I see in selection of their fabrics online. So, books and patterns, let's go to patterns. Um, let's just see if we can get a little higher display count. Let's go to 48 on a page. Just saves us from scrolling through. Fair selection. Average prices. So, yeah, they've got quite a few here, and they have six pages of those. So, okay, good variety. What about threads? Well, what brand? Orifil, Glide, and Guterman. Okay, Orifil and Glide, two of the ones I'm very familiar with. $14.99 for Orifil. That's average price. And what are they selling Glide for? Let's uh, go up here. The Glide. And they have Guterman as well. 
slide 699 yep that's what i pay for it down here so nothing fantastically extreme or inexpensive here we have kits I have a few kits Looks like they, they deal with a lot of Kimberbell. Notions, well, probably pretty much the standard kind of thing. Cutting tools and mats. Well, uh, yeah. Mm. What you would expect. Just check out your batting. You can buy batting by the meter. Uh, no, you can't. Because they don't have any at the moment. Batting packaged yeah one so it looks like they're having a little trouble keeping batting in stock um discount what's this all about oh this is their sale bin okay um and they have gift cards as well now they do sell sewing machines and i think it's huskavara okay maybe not that part is empty as well Again, it might be something that they have in their store. Maybe this is for future development. And it looks like they may have a uh, reward program as well. Now, bottom line is shipping. What can we find out about shipping? Let's go back to their main page. Let's do a search under shipping. And not finding anything there okay so what do they charge for shipping well let's fake buy something here let's cut i'm gonna buy some of that and i'm gonna buy i'm gonna buy three meters of it Okay. So shipping would cost me $20. I have a feeling that that's a flat rate. So let's see here. How do I empty out this basket? Go up here and let's go remove. So, yeah, if it is a flat rate at $20, can, probably coming by Canada Post, why won't it let me remove this? Well, it won't let me remove that. So I'll just, and I can't do anything here. Well, I don't know. I haven't checked anything in there. So I guess we'll say goodbye to that. Not too impressed as to how this works. Here, I like to know up front what the shipping is, and unless I've missed that somewhere on here, um, yeah. Overall, though, I think there's a good selection. Uh, it does attract me to their actual uh, brick and mortar store. So, as I said, if I happen to be close to them uh, when I'm traveling through New Brunswick, then I will try to make an effort to drop in on the store and see what it's like. So, that's the Covered Bridge Quiltery. So that brings me to the end of this episode of The Idiot Quilter. Just a reminder that we have So with Stephanie and Stephen tomorrow, Wednesday, March the 22nd, starting at 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Links in the show notes. Uh, you can join in at any time, but it may only run for about an hour and a half. It, it depends. If I, I'm in the zone and I'm uh sewing away then i may be here till noon i don't know um no guarantee of that we will be here at least until 10 30 uh our time and what else um yeah i've talked about submitting your uh sew along quilts and i've talked about the retreat so i think that's about it so i hope you will check out my vlog i hope you'll check out the interview and there'll be another episode of So Chatty come Friday. And then, of course, on Sunday afternoon, we have Stephen and Walter Live. So lots of videos for your viewing enjoyment. I hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoy your week. Have a good one. Go make something creative and exciting. See you later. Bye-bye.